Leo. How are you, mate? Yeah, uh, good. I'm very good. Very good. Listen, uh, are you got a minute? Yeah, I do. Actually, yeah. yeah uh, what's going on? Um, well, listen, um, I was wondering if I could do a quick interview with you on the phone now and just record it as a bit of a audio blog thing for the members in the group. Yeah, well, um, yeah, that's probably all right now. Yeah? yeah? Awesome. All right. Um, well, Nathan, it's good to be chatting to you. Um, I know yeah, sure, yeah. it's been a couple of years now. Um, uh, well... Um, where do we start? But then, um, uh, like, uh, like world champion and um, uh, distance jump record holder, and um, like many other um, world act- attributes as well, which is uh, basically like um, um, I'm in the Hall of Fame as well yep. with um, Australian mountain biking and around the world as well. So. You are one serious, serious mountain biker. Yeah, I've been doing it for like 20 years sort of thing, so... That's fantastic, mate. Now, um, yeah. when you had your thylacine experience, you were actually doing a charity ride at that point, weren't you? That's right, yeah. We were out doing a charity ride for um, Rare Cancers. Uh, one of my buddies, uh, Paul Begg, was on the ride with us, and another one of my friends was on the ride as well. He survived cancer as well, and we decided to ride from the from the um, smallest place in the world, which is Lake Eyre, to the highest place, place in the world, which is um, Salt to Snow, which is uh, um, about 200, uh, sorry, uh, 2,500 k's. Yep. Because um, it got lost a few times. It, it, it ended up being a lot further than what we thought, but then yeah, it was a 21-day trip. It's a huge and, ride. Uh, Oh, yeah. How, how many k's a day were you averaging? We were looking at about a hundred k's a day, but it turned out to be more than that because it got lost a few times. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, and we didn't have phone reception. We didn't have um, any water or anything like that. So a few of those days turned out to be like 190 k's or 150 k's, and yeah, we just ended up in towns that didn't that. No one existed, basically. So yeah, kept... lessons learnt along the way, I suppose. Yeah, well, lessons learnt, but a great experience at, at the same time, you know. Yeah, like, absolutely. It's those times when you actually enjoy yourself the most sometimes, I think. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, dig oh, in. I mean, like, it, was, it was amazing, actually, man. Did you, you know, meet a lot of people there. along the way, you know? Oh, buddy, yes. Yeah. Like, buddy, yes, I mean. Like um, some of the people out there are just like we one of the ladies and uh, another fellow as well that we met along the way. Uh, I asked this lady, like, well, um, like, where do you live? And she like said some country town, and I, said, oh, I can't even recite it really. But and then she uh, said, oh, yeah, I've been here for seventy years. I was like, well, where else have you been? And she's like, no, I've just been here. I, I was just been here for seventy years. I was like, okay. Well, I've been here for about ten minutes, and I'm I'm talking to you. So, yeah, <laughs> she didn't she didn't have a lot a lot of stories, really. Yeah, you thought she might have, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, like she she's been to the, she's been to the supermarket, and she's been to the pub, and then she's been back to the supermarket, and she goes goes back home about. And that's about her whole life. Yeah, there, there was a lady in Derby a few years ago in Tasmania. You'd be familiar with Derby for the uh, mountain bike tracks. Um, but there used yeah, yeah. to be a lady there who'd never left Derby. Yeah. And she was in her 70s or something. Yeah, well, this lady was about 70 as well. Yeah, like she was an um, old lady and that was just her little gig. Like, uh, she used to work on a train line out there and uh, that, that was her job and... And she just stayed there once the train line finished. And from what I can gather, she just had her, her little group of friends out there. And, and that was and it? Then, yeah, that was it, yeah. Yeah. Like could, now, um... I highly doubt she had a car, so, yeah. <laughs> now, I'll get this, this underway. I was just interviewing another fella before, and the local copper pulled up to see what I was up to, but everything's cool. We've got the AOK, so, uh... I don't get very good reception at my house because it's in a bit of a gully. Yeah, that's right. So I'm about two k's up the road from my place. 
So um, this journey you were doing from Lake Eyre through the Flinders Ranges to the, the Snowy Mountains somewhere, I'm guessing, in Victoria or New South Wales? Yeah, um, we made it all the way to Mount Kosciuszko. Mount so Kosciuszko. From, the yeah, lowest so we point to the highest point. Yep, salt of snow. Yep. So the lowest point to the highest point. Fantastic. Now, when you were going through the Flinders Ranges... Um, when I first spoke to you, it was it was pretty exciting actually because I was out bush, not not a lot different than what I am now, um, and um, the three of you guys rang me that I think it was the evening of the sighting, and you were all pretty well peaking. There was a fair amount of adrenaline going. So um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah tell it tell us again uh, how it all rolled that day. I, I remember it was roughly in the middle of the day, wasn't it? Yeah, it was kind of like uh, morning time, and so we uh, we head off out of a small town, same with an O, it was like Oruru or something. Oruru? Oruru? Yeah, yeah, one of those Aboriginal names, um, which are, and we were we were sort of peaking for time, and and we we didn't really know like what we're doing sort of thing. So we just you know you wake up out of your swag and like keep going and. And then, um, uh, yeah, so we're just sort of getting our eyes set and our bums set as well for the, for the ride. And, uh, like, we're all hurting. I mean, like, like Paul was, uh, like, recovering from cancer and Matt was as well. And I was sort of semi-fit at the time. And, but, yeah, like, <laughs> we were just, like, waking ourselves up in the swag and we kept going and, started riding on the road like we'd seen everything basically which is you know goats kangaroos um cats uh dingoes dogs all that sort of stuff and we're all pretty worldly as well so we know we know what we're doing and we're, we know what, what we're seeing and um obviously I, a lot of uh say what you say um uh roadkill and stuff like that so you know we're we're pretty used to it by then and then um yeah, this this creature appeared from our left, uh, walking through the the salt bush, and it started uh, walking towards us. And, and I, you know, I I did the process of elimination basically. Yeah. So I was like, okay, well, well, what is, what is this? And then it was going. It's like it's not a dingo. It's not anything like that. And then walking towards us, then it crossed the road in front of us which is about 30 metres away from the guest, and, and then um, ditched off into the other side of the road after I saw it cross the road, and I was like, well, like, what uh, like what, the, what am I seeing sort of thing? And, and then Paul, who was about five metres ahead of me, said, did you see that? And I said, yeah, I saw that. I thought, I thought that was a Tasmanian tiger. And he was like, no, that's, that's a thylacin. And I was like... Because I didn't know where a thylacin was. Yeah, um, yeah. And then he's like, and he's like, that's a thylacin. And then Matt came up behind me and was like, oh, did you see that? And I was like, well, I did see that, but what the what the fuck was it? <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> and so like, yeah. So we just like ditched our bikes and tried to find this thing. But then, to be honest, I, I didn't really want to find it because it looked that fucking gnarly <laughs> that I didn't. I was like, okay, let's just. Let's not get too went. close, sure. Yeah, I, I don't want to see this thing, really. And then, like, um, like the, the thought did cross my mind that, you know, maybe we did see something. Um, but, yeah, after after a little a bit of um, deliberation between us, uh, it was it was obvious that, that that's that's what we saw. I mean, like, we're not stupid. Sure. Like, it was... It was it was right in front of us. Like, How many metres yeah. are we saying here? Probably 20, 30 metres? Uh, well, at the end of it, when it did, when it ducked off the side of the road, on, on our side of the road, it was probably 10 metres. Yeah, and it, we had a very clear image of what we did. We even went to the extent of, uh, like, Matt was a, like, a graphic designer, basically. Yep. And, and so he was, like, a little bit behind us. And so... Um, like he was like, okay, do not, do not tell me what you saw. I'm going to write what I saw, and then I'm going to draw it, and then we look up some pictures and see 
if it matches. And so the first couple of pictures that I looked up, like I was um, a little bit skeptical. I was like, oh, maybe it didn't say one, maybe this one. And, and, and then I saw a picture which pretty much was exactly the same as what he showed me with his little sketch. And I was yeah. like, okay, yeah, we saw it. Yeah, it was there. And it even went to the roadkill, like on the outside of the road, and all the crows, like, pissed off, basically. Um, them be knowing that that's the head of the food chain, basically. So Yeah. And so, yeah, it just pissed off. And, yeah, like, we just... <laughs> Mate, it was right in front of us. We saw it. Yep. Yeah. That's amazing. And um, when you say it was a bit gnarly looking, it, it was a reasonable size, I take it? Yeah, like a, a big, like smaller than a German Shepherd, but then bigger than a, uh, what do you call it, like, um, like a blue cattle dog, like a big blue cattle dog. Yeah, like okay. a larger version of a bluey. Yeah, a larger version of a bluey and had the tail up and then like, the uh, big asshole as well. Yep. Yeah, and so like the the tail was up in the air, and the tail was larger than what it was at the peak of the tail as well. So it was small, then like coming up in, into a point as well. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, and and, and then, um, you clearly saw stripes. Well, I didn't clearly see stripes exactly, but the front of the um, the machine <laughs> or the um, the uh, the tiger. Like the nose was all um, front, basically. So so you were looking square. at front on most of the time. You weren't square onto it. Well, it did. It did like a ninety on us, and so it was coming towards us, and then across the road, and then that's when I got to see like the hind and everything. So like the the back was then like a hind, and then it went into the tail. And so so the, the, the the tail was wide, and then it went up to a peak. Sure. And so the, the back of the tiger um, was a different colour to the front of the tiger and so that's what kind of like made me think a little bit and like there was blotches of like stripes but it was wasn't like, defined different. definitively it was more blotchy it wasn't exactly defined although like when I've done my own research like the ones on the mainland don't have the major definitive lines only the ones in Tasmania do because they like hang out in the grass basically because that's their like camouflage kind of thing and so like what we saw like it was definitely different from the front to the back and it yeah. had, like a hind on it sort of thing so, so it was a darker coloration towards the rear end rather than being striped exactly yeah but you could still sort of see the the, uh, the stripes in it um, although like they weren't really it was just like a a different colour sort of thing, yeah. And was the overall colour a fawn? Was it a brown? Was it a reddish colour? What was the overall colour of it? Well, I would say that the, like, like the front of the tiger was like a sand colour, mm -hmm. like a, an, an off brown, and then the back of the hind was a, like a, a, a darker brown with some kind of stripes, but you couldn't really see them sort of thing and, and the thing was sort of running like a um can you like a funny sort of like a canter basically like a canter yeah so it was a different kind of run it wasn't a normal dog like run no it was yeah it was it, it was a funny run yeah um can you remind me what time of the year was this roughly can you recall what month it was uh this was uh two years ago roughly yeah it was 2018 yeah, yeah, 2018, and uh, it was about eight o'clock in the morning. Okay. Um, even, even earlier. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah, like we we tried to get up at, at the like sunrise sort of thing, and then um, we were just kind of sneaking along there, and then all of a sudden this thing just appeared. So. Awesome. And um, have the other guys spoken about it much to you since, or it's just? Um yeah, we have spoken about it. Yeah, just uh, doing just doing different sort of uh, things, and we like like Salt of Snow was basically our charity ride for for Becky, who's now be, become sick again, 
and so we're we're still sort of like trying to um, get some um, get some uh, funds together to help him out. Yeah, basically, but like we tried to keep this separate as much as we could. Sure. Uh, because it, like it was a completely different episode that we had. Yeah, but so, it was part of the journey, I suppose. Yeah, it was, it was just part of the journey, and like it was just something that you see along the way, and we, we were just like blown away from it. And, well, you're part you know, of a had, part of an elite club, that's for sure. Yeah, we had we had so many critics. It was just like, oh, now they're they're all gone. Like even my daughter went to her school and said, oh, my dad saw a Tasmanian tiger, Tasmanian tiger, and her her teacher said, oh, no, they're extinct. <laughs> and, and so, like, I've been going and picking her up from school every now and then, and and like, I want to go and tell this teacher. Yeah, there was this, three of us who saw this thing, not just one person. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah, gives it a lot more credence, I tell you, when there's three witnesses um, in broad daylight like that. That's pretty significant at a short distance, ten, twenty meters. You know. Yeah, it was. It was. It was. It was so weird. I mean, like, the thing was smarter than us. You could tell that it was smarter than us, but because we were on e-bikes and we were um, like kind of in, insignificant to them, then it just had no problem when it didn't hear us coming, kind of thing. And, and so then it just disappeared over the other side of the, of the road, and then all the crows just, like, booked it out of there. They, they just flew away. Yeah. And then, yeah, so, like, they knew, like, crows are smart. Yeah, and yeah. So, and so they knew that, um, like, there was a predator in the mix, basically. And, and it was the head honcho. Yeah, he, yeah. <laughs> like, like I said before, I mean, I, I don't even want to find that then. Because it looked pretty fucking gnarly when we were like, <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, I often wonder if I end up encountering one up close, just how I'm going to handle that situation. <laughs> yeah, it was it was weird. I mean, like we all ditch our bikes at, like all at once, just yeah. like toss them across the road because you know it's pretty desolate, and and then we just tried to find this thing, and it, like the only conclusion that we came to was the fact that. There was like these pipelines underneath the road, and so we were looking that way across the road, and then it probably went back underneath the pipelines and, and took off the off. other way. Yeah, yeah, and it pissed off and, and like hit or whatever sort of thing. So, yeah, uh, it's an amazing yeah. story, mate. And how's everything else going anyway with this lockdown? You's all going okay? Where are you? Yeah, I'm up on the Gold Coast at the moment. Okay, yeah. at home. Yeah, at home. Yeah, Excellent. Yeah. Family's all safe? Yeah, everyone's pretty safe. I've got my beautiful girlfriend here and that little puppy here. I'm, I'm pretty sure the puppy won't want to find a solid thing, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> She'll probably bark at it. No doubt. Oh, well, that's yeah, good yeah. to hear, mate. Awesome. All right, well, look, I'll let you get back to what you're doing there. Um, thanks very much for recounting that for us. That's a really good sighting story. It's it's awesome one with, you know, multiple witnesses and stuff. It's really good. Yeah, no, that's it. I mean, like, um, like, like to, to sort of close this off, I mean, like, we wouldn't, like, bullshit ourselves, you know. It's, like, there's no real real point in doing that. And, and like, we're all pretty pretty worldly, and I'm pretty damn sure we saw a, a tile thing. Watch yeah. your eyes. Yeah. Well, next time you're down in Tassie at Derby, mate, come out to the lodge and have a cup of coffee. Yeah, no worries, man. <laughs> I'm not I too will. far. I'm only about 20 minutes from Derby. Yeah, sorry, well, let's do it. All right, mate. Yeah. Awesome. Be great to catch up and meet you. All right, cheers now. All right, thanks very much. Take care now. Okay, see you now. Bye-bye.